Good evening. <clears throat> Welcome to our Seven Locks Baptist Church Wednesday night prayer and devotional time. Uh, we're a couple minutes late getting started tonight. We had a few technical difficulties uh, going on, but we've got them all resolved. I'm just pulling up the uh, Facebook feed on my laptop so I can look at comments. Uh, <clears throat> as you're here tonight, if you would, uh, jump in on the comments and say hello. Uh, let us know where you're from and uh, where you're watching us from tonight. Uh, it's good to see all of you. Let me pull this video up so I can take a look at the, the camera angles and get everything set. All right, we're 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 in good shape. Good evening again. What a week it's been. Um, I hope that uh, you guys are doing well and staying healthy and that things are going great. We've had somewhat of an eventful day today here at the... Uh, SLBC office, but more so up at the Morton household. Earlier today, we had a magical bird that somehow flew through our closed uh, chimney flue and got stuck inside of our fireplace. That was very exciting. It happened right before the start of homeschool. So that was very interesting, to say the least. And, you know, so we ended up, Lindsay had a great idea to get our dog carrier and to put it up against the glass door of the fireplace and open it. And the bird flew in with no problem when we shut it and we were able to get it outside. That was fantastic. But then, when you know it, the bird got his head stuck inside of the door. He was fine. We were able to get him out. If you were worried about this bird, um, he's fine. But after having him get stuck in the fireplace and then getting him in the dog here, he got his head stuck on the in the door. And so that was a lot of fun, but we were able to get through that. Um, and the kids got to see the bird and marvel at the bird. And I think we took pictures of it because we're still trying to have our friend Brian identify what this bird is because it's not one we've seen before. Uh, we don't think it's a magical bird. It's just not a kind that we're familiar with. We have a lot of blue jays and cardinals that hang out in our yard as well as the world's fattest robins. Elliot will tell you about this as well. We seriously don't know how these robins fly because they are gigantic and very rotund in the front, but somehow they're able uh, to to fly. Even, you know, they look more like they would be like a penguin, but they actually can fly. So there's that. That was kind of an exciting and eventful day. Uh, we just uh, finished our dinner here. Excuse me a second, let me take a drink. And so now I'm, I'm here with you uh, tonight. As always, since our Wednesday night gatherings are a little bit more informal, I want to give you a minute, if you are, are watching live, uh, to uh, just uh, pop in and leave a prayer request. And uh, we'd like to, you know, we're going to pray with everyone tonight. And uh, that's part of what we do on Wednesday nights. And so we want to um, do that with you tonight as uh, we gather together. Again, I want to encourage you to talk to each other, to reach out, to connect. Uh, this is, you know, the middle of May now. Can't believe that. Um, next, next Friday is my mom's birthday, but it's also Elena's birthday uh, because they share the same birthday. <clears throat> that was um, kind of worked out great. And, and so we are uh, going to be getting ready for all of that. But it's, it's just nuts to think that we're this far into the month of May. And we still kind of find ourselves in this situation. Uh, <clears throat> from what I've seen, things do look number-wise and things are starting to look better. But we just have to keep praying, you know, and trusting that God is going to get us through this time. Uh, as we pray tonight, we want to remember our friend Jeff, who is still in the hospital with COVID. He is made a, a small amount of progress and working 
towards doing a lot better, but he is um, just not out of the woods yet in that regard. Of course, we want to remember all of our, our doctors, our nurses, uh, our grocery store workers, our restaurant employees. Um, they remember them, those in the service industry, uh, those who are furloughed right now. Uh, and we want to remember all of our both our, our federal, our state, and our local leaders uh, to continue to pray for them, for, for guidance and wisdom. Uh, I know in, in these days, everybody has a differing opinion about all, all how they feel about different levels of leadership, and we're all certainly entitled to that. But in this time, it never hurts to pray for people. And <clears throat> because if they do well, we do well. And so we want to pray for everyone always i mean remember jesus said love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you so however you feel about all that fun and lovely stuff pray for them prayer makes a difference and i appreciate all of you who are praying for us and our family in this time uh, we have felt your prayers and it is greatly appreciated miss you guys um, i look forward to getting to be around the table with you again you know, one of the things that I miss most right now in, in how we're doing church, it's not, I'm so grateful that we have a way to continue to do ministry and to connect with folks. But I miss being able to get around the table with folks, whether it's to, to sit around for, for lunch or, or small groups. I miss that immensely. That is um, something that over the years, you know, over the years, over the last few months, it feels like years sometimes, that I've really missed is getting to connect face to face and personally. Although, like I said, God is good in the sense that at least we have the opportunity to do this, to be in this place and in this setting together. So I'm going to pray for you, for us all in just a minute. Uh, again, thank you so much to everyone who is watching. Uh, our folks on YouTube and Facebook, I, you're actually right here, but I have the Facebook feed up here to see comments and see who all's here. But hello to everyone who is watching on both formats tonight and everyone who will view this later on. Um, so I'm going to lead us in a time of prayer. And if uh, <clears throat> any time on Wednesdays, no every week prior to our service, uh, Seven Locks Baptist Church at Gmail. Please feel free to send me an email. We would love to um, love to pray for you. You know, some prayer requests were appropriate to to share in the broadcast. Others are not, just due to privacy issues, laws, and all the fun HIPAA stuff. Um, so uh, know though that that I, I read all the emails I get and read all the prayer requests, and we, you know, I get it. Know that when we pray, even if I don't say it out loud, I've read it and I am praying for you. And I want to remind you that we're going to get through this. That that there is a light at the end of the tunnel. I don't want to talk too much about that because I've been writing my sermon for Sunday and I'm going to talk a little more about that Sunday. But we're going to get through this. Uh, God is good. Uh, it was a beautiful day here in Maryland. It was a lot less cooler than it has been, which is insane to think in the middle of May that we're talking about that you know we we had 34 to you know it was 34 degrees the last couple of mornings uh, it was 38 this morning when I walked I actually had to wear my winter coat again uh, it has just been a crazy uh, season but it's a beautiful day today I actually got to do one of my favorite pastimes which was to grill and that was fun enjoyed that and, and now we're here uh, those of you who are, are sports fans and who are struggling or baseball fans, if you wake up early in the morning, if you're on the East Coast, it's not too bad. 5.30, 6 o'clock, you can catch a little of the Korean baseball games or watch them, the replays in the afternoons if, if you're at home. Not the baseball I'm used to, but it is, it's it's baseball, so it's good to, to at least watch half an inning and remember, wait a minute. This is springtime. We're supposed to be watching baseball. I'm hoping that we're going to hear from Major League Baseball that we're going to be reopening in June. So I'm hopeful about that. I hope wherever you are that you have an opportunity to do something that you really enjoy. 
that that helps you feel a little more normal in this time. Uh, if you like to exercise, I encourage you to do that of any any kind. But if it's reading, whatever it might be, I just want to encourage you find that thing that that God has given you that that brings you joy and keep doing it. I know a lot of people are baking. I realize I know this because every time I go to get uh, a, some kind of flour. Uh, it's hard to get unless you want to go to Costco and get the 3,000 pound bag of flour. And I was not inclined to do that the other day. But whatever you, wherever you are, what, whatever your setting is, I want to encourage you to find something that brings you joy in this time. And, and hold on to that because that's one of the things I think that God has given each of us to help us cope and to get through this. So I'm going to pray now. And then I have a short little devotional that I want to share with you tonight. And then we will... I'll sign off after that, and then we'll be back together again on Sunday morning, 11 o'clock Eastern. But let's pray now uh, and spend some time with God tonight. Join me as we pray. Lord Jesus, we love you. God, we thank you so much for the opportunity to be in your presence tonight. Lord, we pray for peace and encouragement. Lord, we pray that you would... Help us to find joy in the midst of everything going on. Lord, we pray for all of our first responders, all of our folks who are faithfully going to work in various settings every day. We pray for those who are at home uh, recuperating from different, from various illnesses, not just COVID, but we pray for them, those awaiting surgery, God, those getting over surgery, those with other health concerns, that your healing hands would be upon them. We want to lift up our friend Jeff, who is still fighting COVID in the hospital. God, we pray that you would give him strength and help him through this, that you would restore his health. Uh, Lord, we uh, pray for his wife through this as well. Uh, God, we ask that you would continue to help us, remind us, God, that, that you're here, that you're working, that, that you haven't left us, and that we are going to get through this time because you are present with us. Lord, be our hope and our peace, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. So tonight, I want to share a, a brief word with you from Matthew chapter 11. And just a, a few verses. You know, here we are in the midst, uh, you know, and as I said a moment ago, in the middle of May. Uh, I don't know about you, but some of you probably feel like this has gone on a lot longer than you thought it would. And and you're struggling, and so I wanted to offer this word of hope to you. Uh, especially, I think it, it's hard for a thousand different reasons for everyone. I mean, we are all in the same storm, but we're not necessarily all in the same boat in how we are facing and dealing with this. But I think it's it's hard for us, even from a faith perspective, in the fact that we know Jesus, and, and we know that God is God, and God is big, and God can do anything, and God can, God's going to get us through this. There is going to be a time after this. And like I keep saying, because I keep seeing it all over the web, and that's where we're living these days, talking about the new normal. I just want to say again and again, this is not the new normal. I don't know what the new normal is going to look like, but I can just tell you this is not it. This is still the crisis. We're still in this. And on the other side, once we're in the recovery phase, that'll begin to become more clear. But I don't. the reason I, I keep hammering this is because I don't want you to think that this is what life's going to be like for the next 50 years. Now, when this is over, are things going to be a little different? Well, sure they are. Every time we've had some pivotal point or shift in history, Things have been a little different. After 9-11, life was different. Life's going to be different after COVID. But what is going to be consistent is that we're going to get through it. We'll adapt, we'll grow, and we're going to hold on to each other. And I think right now in this time when we are holding on to each other and we're waiting this out and waiting to see what's going to happen and how God's going to move and, and all of these things, that it's very natural to have those moments when you're like, oh my gosh, when is enough enough? When are, when are we going to get through this? Why is God taking his time? 
in delivering not just us in one little region or or town. I mean, this is a worldwide issue. And I, and I feel like God is good in the sense that we are making headway. We're not out of it, but it seems like we're making headway. Some places are further along than others. But even in the midst of that, we're, we're experiencing this worldwide and we're thinking, oh my gosh, God, when are we going to get through this? When are you going to, to make your move? And the reason I bring that up is because if that's where you are tonight, I want you to know that you're in good company. That someone whom you probably haven't thought about feeling this way, felt this way in Scripture. And it's not Peter, it's not Thomas that we, you know, we talked about a few weeks ago, but it's John the Baptist. That John the Baptist had one of these moments himself where he went, Oh my gosh, when is God going to move? And he says this to Jesus, or he sends it by messengers because he's in prison. Now, a little background on John the Baptist, just to, to refresh your memory. John the Baptist is Jesus' cousin. He is the daughter of Zechariah and Elizabeth, or the daughter, the son of Zechariah and Elizabeth. And he has been given a special calling to go and prepare the way for the Messiah. To be like one like Elijah, making the way in the desert. Now he was a Nazarite, and what that meant was he didn't ever get a haircut, and he had a special diet, and he didn't drink wine of any kind or any kind of alcohol. And John himself was a wild man. He lived out in the wilderness. Uh, he ate locusts and honey, and he had this long hair and this big long beard. As I've said before to our congregation, he probably looked like a member of ZZ Top except for the fact that he looked even wilder because he had camel hair garments. And, and sometimes you know, when you see him portrayed in the movies, he has this wild-eyed look in his eyes because he's this wild man who lives out in the wilderness. You know, today they would make a reality show about him. He made the Duck Dynasty guys look tame in terms of his beard and all of that, you know, his whole appearance. And he was the guy that God had raised up to go and preach repentance. And people would come out to him and repent of their sins and be baptized in the Jordan. And he understood his calling was to prepare the way for the coming of the Messiah. And he believed that to be his cousin Jesus when Jesus came out to him. And Jesus said, baptize me, John. And John was taken aback. This wild, rough, and tough dude said, wait a minute. I don't need, you don't need to be baptized by me. I need to be baptized by you. But Jesus said, no, this needs to happen to fulfill all righteousness. And so, John baptized Jesus and John continued to preach and continued his ministry. And it, there, came, there came a point in scripture that, that John talks about in the gospel of John that People, more and more people started to go to Jesus and less people were coming to John the Baptist. And they began to ask John the Baptist, Hey, John, what do you think about this? More and more people are going to Jesus. John said, well, That's good. He must increase and I must decrease. I mean, he was humble. He understood Jesus' calling. And he understood his calling. But you fast forward some time... And John is still doing what he's been called to do. He's preaching and he's, he's, he's talking about sin and he's calling people to repentance. And then he begins to challenge the regional governor of the area, Herod Antipas, who was one of King Herod's sons. Because he had taken his brother, Herod Philip's wife, as his own. And John is publicly denouncing him and calling him on the carpet and saying, Man, this is wrong. You should not have done this. You are sinning. Your, your wife is a sinner. This is wrong, dude. And so Herod Antipas was so warm and fuzzy being a part of the Herod family that he threw John the Baptist in jail. And John the Baptist was most likely in the first century version of Alcatraz. I mean, he's locked up. It's a dreary place, and it's in this time that he begins to, to become very melancholy and to have his doubts, because here Jesus is talking about the kingdom of God is near. The kingdom of God is at hand. 
And John is now sitting in prison going, okay, if the kingdom of God is at hand, come on. I mean, come on, Jesus. What are you waiting on? I'm in prison. And I thought I was doing what God had told me to do. And I thought you were the one. But if that's the case, why do I find myself locked up? And that's where we're going to pick up in Matthew 11. We're going to start in verse 1. And read a few of these verses together. Verses 1 through 6. Matthew 11, 1 through 6. So join me in your copy of Scripture. Or just listen along as I read together. After Jesus had finished instructing his twelve disciples, he went on from there to teach and preach in the towns of Galilee. When John, who was in prison, heard about the deeds of the Messiah, he sent his disciples to ask him, Are you the one who is to come, or should we expect someone else? Jesus replied, Go back and report to John what you see and hear. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is proclaimed to the poor. Blessed is anyone who does not stumble on account of me. I love some of the older versions of the NIV because it says, Blessed is he who does not fall away on account of me. So John is depressed. Because he's done what he thought God had called him to do. But he was not expecting the consequences of what it meant to be this voice calling out in the wilderness. To prophetically challenge sin. To challenge life as the way it was. And so he sends his disciples to ask Jesus, Hey, are you really the one who is to come? Or should we be waiting on somebody else? And in this moment, just like I think sometimes it's very common for us, it's easy for us to look at these people in Scripture. And, you know, if, we've, if you've been in church a while or, or you're, you feel real comfortable, you, you want to go, oh, well, well, you know, if I was there, I would have more faith than John the Baptist. I only have one response to that. Really? Because I'm not sure that I would have. I actually empathize a great deal with John in this instance, in the sense that haven't you ever been in a place where you knew that God was calling you to get involved? That God was leading you and you went where God called you to be only to face opposition and difficulty and hardship. And haven't you ever had those days where even though you knew you were in the place God called you to be, that you wondered, um, God, are you sure? Are you sure this is where you wanted me to go and what you wanted me to do? Because I'm not sure that I signed up for this. My mentor Bill always used to say, Hey, God called and said, Who will go for us? And if you said, Here am I, send me, don't complain about where God sent you because you said, Here I am, God, use me. And now He is. That's a tough place to be. And, it, and, it, and it's an honest place to be, to, to feel like, oh my gosh, here I am. I know I'm in the place I'm supposed to be. I know I'm being faithful. But oh my gosh, this is so much harder than I realized it would be. And why haven't things changed? If Jesus really is the Messiah, why can't he get on with his business of Messiahing? Of bringing the kingdom. And that's why John sends his disciples to say, man, look. Are you really the one who is to come, or should we expect someone else? And you have to love Jesus' response because it's the response that only Jesus can give. Go back and tell John <laughs> the blind see, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are healed. And the good news is proclaimed to the poor. Blessed are those who don't fall away from the faith because of me. In other words, blessed are those who don't lose faith 
because of the way I go about being the Messiah. And the, what he is conveying to John is, John, yes, I'm doing what I've been called to do just as you did. But the kingdom of heaven and my way of bringing it to this earth just is not what you expect. But it's the way God is doing it. The blind see, the lame walk, the leprosy. Those with leprosy are healed. The good news is preached to the poor. This is the very essence of who God is and what he wants to restore. And then again, as I said a while ago, Jesus says, Blessed is he who does not fall away on account of me. And it's a great challenge because I think that, that like all of us, we, we get in that place where, like John the Baptist where, okay, God, I went where you, I was supposed to go, but it's really hard and I'm really struggling. And if you know, John, if you're very familiar with John the Baptist story, you know that John the Baptist story does not have what we would call a happy ending in the sense that John is beheaded. Because he stands his ground. But I want you to know that John's story doesn't necessarily, does not end there at all. That John found new life. But even in the midst of that, I think the words of Jesus reminded him that God is at work. I'm doing the work of the Father. I'm doing what God has called me to do. Don't fall away because it doesn't look like you expect it to, John. Because I am working. And so tonight, I just want to encourage you. This is a tough situation we found ourselves in. But as I've said before, I fully and firmly believe that God is using this time. That God is using this time for all of us to connect with one another. I fully and firmly believe that God is doing great things and that hearts are being changed, that, that doors are being opened, and that when this is over, people's lives are going to be different because they're going to know Jesus and they didn't before. But in this time, I just want to encourage you and challenge you to know that God is at work. The blind see, the lame walk, those with leprosy are being healed and the good news is being preached to the poor. Even now, think about it. Back in February, did, did you think that we would be doing our Wednesday night time and you're looking at your laptop or maybe I'm on a television or your iPad or your iPhone? I'm looking into a GoPro 7 right now and into a webcam. This is not exactly what I thought go and, pre, go and share the gospel would look like. But nonetheless, I firmly believe God is at work. And this is a time, as tough as it is, to remember that if you are, have gone to a place where you know God put you, it, and it may be rough, don't give up. Because Jesus is at work. He's at work in this world, and he's at work in you. And blessed are we if we do not lose heart, because Jesus is working in a way that is different than what we expect. Just because it's different doesn't mean it's not happening. I love all of you. It's been great to connect tonight I'm going to say a word of prayer for us to close us out, but let me just remind you that we will be here again Sunday morning at 11 a.m. Eastern Time, 10 o'clock Central, 8 o'clock on the West Coast for our morning worship. I'm looking forward to uh, what, what the Lord is laying on my heart. I'm excited about it. We're going to be looking at Isaiah chapter 9. We're going to be talking about the light of the world, and that's Jesus. So I hope that you'll connect with us then and make time to stop in for worship and join us. 
Uh, again, so glad to have those of you with us who are live. Uh, so great. Those of you who are going to watch this later, uh, thanks for being a part of our time together tonight. And remember, God is at work. God is at work. Jesus has not left us, but he is present. He's working in the world and he's working through you as you let him and as you respond in obedience. Let's pray. God, give us the strength not to give up. Give us the strength to keep going. Remind us that you are with us. We love you and we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Thank you so much. <clears throat> we'll see you Sunday. Good night, faithful.